Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, we have a request for uh, dua. Uh, our uh, sister Arifa Chaudhary, her mother, uh, Salina Chaudhary, passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna raji'un. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive her and to make her qabr a vast place. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to cleanse her of her sins, to grant her maghfirah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant her firdaus al-a'la. Allah maghfir laha wa rahamaha wa afiha wa afu anha wa akrim nuzulaha wa wasi' mudkhalaha wa ghsilha bil ma'i wa thalji wa al-barad. We ask Allah to also give sabr to the family of the one who has passed away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we seek His help. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and the consequences of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whoever is misguided, none can be guided except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness and I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. And I bear witness and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his final prophet and his most perfect worshipper. 
As to what follows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us to be conscious of him. When he says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Dear Muslims, the Quran tells us of one of the most dangerous diseases that afflicts mankind. It is a disease that can be said to be the root of all other diseases. It is a disease that the Quran warns us against and it is called Qaswatul Qalb or the hardening of the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in the Quran to not be like those whose hearts have hardened. In one surah Allah says, Alam ya'ni lilladheena amanu an takhsha' qulubuhum li dhikrillah. Hasn't the time come for the believers that their hearts become soft at the remembrance of Allah? and that they do not follow the path of those who came before them. As time went on, their hearts became hard. As time went on, their hearts became hard. Allah says, don't be like those before you. They have the book, they have the Torah, they have the Injil, they have the Zabur, but they neglected it and their hearts became hard. Allah tells us in the Quran of the people of Musa, they saw the miracle of the dead, of the Red Sea parting. They saw the miracle of being saved from Fir'aun. Then Allah says, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ After they saw the miracles, after a short period of time, their hearts became hard. Allah tells us in the Quran regarding the same people, فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ Their hearts became so hard, they became like rocks. In fact, even harder than rocks. So what is this concept of the hardening of the heart? What is this disease of the hardening of the heart? What are the symptoms of this disease? What causes this disease? And what are some of the cures of this disease? This will be some of what we're going to be talking about, inshallah ta'ala, in today's khutbah. As for the disease of the hardening of the heart, our Prophet ﷺ reminded us that in our entire bodies, there is one lump of flesh. If that lump is pure, the rest of the body is pure. But if that lump is corrupted, the rest of the body is corrupted. Then he said, that small piece of flesh, it is the qalb, it is the heart. So when the heart becomes hard, when the heart ceases to be alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is signaling the mother of all other diseases. It is the lowering of the immunity of the heart. Our scholars mention the hardening of the heart is the disease that opens the door to all other diseases, jealousy and arrogance and kibr and leaving the remembrance of Allah. The hardening of the heart is the foundational disease. If a person has this disease, all other diseases will come. Contrast this with the one whose heart is soft. The one whose heart is soft, his defense mechanism is at an all-time high. The one whose heart is soft, he shall be able to repel all other diseases. So if this disease is so dangerous, then it becomes obligatory on all of us to monitor that disease. You know, the one who is afflicted with high blood pressure, he checks his blood pressure every day. The one who has a sugar problem, he checks his sugar constantly. So how about the one we are told that if you have a hard heart, it will be the mother of all diseases. Shouldn't we check our heart? Shouldn't we check what the status of our qalb is? And in fact, our Prophet ﷺ told us, O believers, this is a hadith, Allah does not look at your bodies. Allah does not look at your outer shape and form. Allah looks at your qalb and your deeds. إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ Allah doesn't look at your outer form. What does Allah look at? Allah looks at your qalb. Allah looks at your heart. And Allah looks at the deeds, at the deeds that you are doing. Therefore, the righteous person will constantly monitor one's own heart. The righteous person is going to check what is the state of my heart today? What was my qalb in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are the symptoms we look for for the hardening of the heart? Number one, the primary symptom of the hardening of the heart is that we do not enjoy the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the worship of Allah becomes a burden, 
when the rituals, when the salah, when the Quran, when the dhikr is no longer bringing us spiritual satisfaction. In fact, it might even become a chore when you are praying, not because you enjoy, but because you just want to get rid of the obligation of prayer. Allah mentions about the hypocrites, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا When they stand up to pray, they are not energetic, energetic, they're not enthused, they are praying because they're lazy, they just want to get rid of the obligation to prayer. This is of the symptoms of the hardness of the heart. Number two of the symptoms of the hardening of the heart, is to not care about the commandments of Allah, what is haram, what is halal, to ignore the sharia, to live a carefree life. You don't care whether the money is haram or halal. You don't care whether the food is haram or halal. You don't care what you're doing is haram or halal. When you find yourself living that life of heedlessness, then realize this is one of the main symptoms of the hardening of the heart. Number three, a symptom of the hardening of the heart is that when sins are committed, then there is no pang of consciousness. There is no sense of guilt. Notice I say when sins are committed. Why? Because everybody sins. Everybody sins. But when the believer sins, the believer sins with a heavy heart. The believer sins and the pang of remorse and the consciousness and the guilt overtakes that person. And that is a sign of Iman. It is a sign of Iman to feel guilty. It's not good to sin. But if you commit a sin, you had better feel guilty. When the sin becomes habitual and there is no remorse and there is no guilt, then realize this is of the major symptoms of a hard heart. Point number four of the symptoms of a hard heart is the hard heart ceases to care about other people. You don't care about the poor, about the weak, about the situation of the ummah. You have no concern about what's happening in Palestine, the Uyghurs, the Burma, the Kashmir. All of this becomes far, far away. It's only about me, myself, and I. Nafsi, nafsi. The person who only cares about himself, this is a symptom of a hard heart. The soft heart cares about everybody. The soft heart is monitoring what's going on around and in the globe. And the hard heart lives a selfish life. And this is a major symptom of a hardening of the heart. Yet another symptom of a hard heart, and this is perhaps the most dangerous, is that the hard heart, Allah says in the Quran, Ala akinna, their hearts are covered and sealed. Allah says that there's a ghilaf, there's a covering shroud over the heart. And therefore, Ya Rasulullah, when you preach to them, it doesn't reach their hearts because their hearts have been sealed. This is the most dangerous, the most dangerous symptom of a hard heart. What is that? Good advice. The Quran, the Sunnah, it falls on deaf ears. Subhanallah. How can you cure somebody when he doesn't even want to pay attention to the cure? This is the most dangerous symptom of a hard heart, that the hard heart no longer cares about what the Quran says, what the Prophet ﷺ says. You can preach, you can recite the Quran, you can tell him the Prophet ﷺ said. And Allah says about another group, they're not Muslims, but Allah says that their hearts have been sealed. Summun, bukmun, umyun, doesn't matter what you say, Ya Rasulallah. So the believer has to be careful to not reach that stage. Because if you reach that stage, then the cure, the antidote will have no effect. When you reach that stage, the heart has lost any hope of coming back unless Allah wills a miracle. So we cannot reach that stage. We seek Allah's refuge from reaching the stage where the Quran and Sunnah falls on deaf ears. So if these are some of the symptoms, and there are more than these, but it is a summary today. If these are some of the symptoms of the disease, the question arises, what causes the disease? Okay, you monitor, you check, but you also must know what causes it because just like a person has you know, a problem with sugar, with diabetes, the doctor will tell him what causes it. What causes it? A lack of exercise, eating bad food. You need to monitor before you get to that stage. So what causes a hardening of the heart? We'll list a few things today. Number one, number one that is mentioned in the Quran that leads to a hard heart. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever turns away from my dhikr is going to live a difficult and miserable life. 
So turning away from the dhikr of Allah leads to a hardening of the heart. Not doing remembrance. And the highest form of remembrance is the salah. And of the highest forms of remembrance is the recitation of the Quran. So the one who does not pray, don't be surprised when the heart becomes hard. The one who does not recite the Quran, don't be surprised when this will lead to a hardening of the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, listen to this verse, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Woe to those whose hearts have become so hard, they don't even remember Allah. Subhanallah. Woe to those whose hearts have become so hard, they do not remember Allah. So if you remember Allah, the hearts will not go hard. So one of the main causes that leads to a hardening of the heart is to abandon the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I caution you from talking too much all the time because talking too much without doing dhikr of Allah makes the heart hard. And the furthest person from Allah is the one whose heart is hard. Talking too much means wasting too much time. And we're going to come back to this point later on. Point number two, what leads to the hardening of the heart. Point number two, what leads to the hardening of the heart is to turn away from the sharia of Allah, to not be concerned about your lifestyle and whether it is in accordance with halal and haram. Obviously, if you don't pay attention to Allah's commandments, then your heart is going to go further away from Allah. Allah mentions explicitly in the Quran that abandoning the sharia leads to a hardening of the heart. Allah says about the Bani Israel, فَبِمَا نَقْضِهِمْ مِيثَاقَهُمْ لَعَنَّاهُمْ وَجَعَلْنَا قُلُوبَهُمْ قَاسِيَةً Because they broke our covenant, they were cursed and their hearts became hard. Because they broke our covenant. What does it mean break our covenant? They did not live up to the sharia. They didn't care about the sharia. فَبِمَا نَقْضِهِمْ مِيثَاقَهُمْ We gave them a mithaq, live up to the sharia. They broke that mithaq. They didn't live up to it. Allah says, we cursed them and we made their hearts hard. Our scholars commented, notice how Allah is linking between his la'na and between the hardening of the heart. If this were the only verse that disparaged the hard heart, it would be sufficient because Allah linked it with his la'na. لَعَنَّاهُمْ وَجَعَلْنَا قُلُوبَهُمْ قَاسِيَةً so, how did that come about? They abandoned the sharia. When you abandon the sharia, you don't care about your lifestyle. Well, then obviously it's going to lead to a hardening of the heart. Point number three of the ways that the heart becomes hard is, Allah says in the Quran, كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Their hearts have become mur murky, darkened because of what they do. Their hearts have become not pure. They are murky. They are dark because of what they do. What is what they do? What is the dust? What is the rust of the heart? What is the darkness of the heart? It is the sins that a person does. So the one who constantly, habitually does sins without any remorse, you are leading yourself to become of those whose hearts are hard. And of the things that makes the heart hard is to give in to every single bodily desire, to open up the door for every pleasure, and to not concern yourself with the hereafter. Too much entertainment, too much laughing, too much giving into the haram pleasures, the pleasures of the body, the pleasures of all of these pleasures. When you open this door, and if you satisfy the bodily desires, you're neglecting the soul's desires. You're neglecting the qalb. So the person who immerses himself in this dunya, the person who's only worried about his wealth and his physical desires and the food that he eats and the pleasures that he enjoys, what is going to happen? When you only concentrate on the body, the soul will slowly become corrupt. So all of these are factors that lead to the hardening of the heart. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَكَثْرَةُ الضَّحِكِ فَإِنَّ كَثْرَةَ الضَّحِكِ تُمِيتُ الْقُلُوبِ I warn you against too much laughing. Too much. He didn't say laughing is haram. Too much laughing. What does it mean too much laughing? I warn you that you make your days and night into nothing but entertainment. This is not the way of the believer. Because too much laughing. What did he say? تُمِيتُ الْقُلُوبِ Causes the qalb to die. 
Your qalb becomes dead when all you're worried about is entertainment. Wallahi, this is common sense. If you only take care of the body, don't be surprised when the soul is going to die. If you only feed the body, don't be surprised the soul is going to wither away. So all of these are causes that lead to the hardening of the heart. Okay, if these are some of the causes, well then what are the cures? What is the solution? Obviously, every one of these causes, the opposite is the solution. So if the cause of the hardening of the heart is to leave dhikr of Allah, then the solution is to increase dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is of the main mechanisms to soften the heart. Constantly doing dhikr of Allah. And dhikr is not just with the tongue. Salah is dhikr. Wa aqimis salata li dhikri. Quran is dhikr. Every remembrance of Allah is a dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innu al qulub. Verily, through the dhikr of Allah, do hearts find tranquility. So, one of the main mechanisms to cure the hardening of the heart is to increase dhikr. Number two, curing the hardening of the heart. Number two, increasing the nafil, increasing the sunnah and nafil. Going above the bare minimum of the five daily salawat and just the fast of Ramadan and just the 2.5%. No, increase the nafil salah, increase the Quran recitation, increase whatever sunnah and nawafil you can do. Our Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that my servant draws closest to me through the obligatory deeds. And then he continues to draw closer to me through the nafil deeds. The way we come closer to Allah after the fard is through the nafil deeds. Number three of how we soften the heart. Number three, learning the sharia and practicing the sharia. Studying the religion and being around people of knowledge and people of taqwa. You know, those of us who we hang around people whose hearts are hard, how will you judge your own heart being hard? But when you hang around the righteous, when you befriend the awliya of Allah, when you're sitting in the company of those who are doing dhikr, all of a sudden you feel a sense of, hey, these people are different than me, and they seem pure and better than me. You get a sense of longing and desire, I wanna be like them. So choose your friends wisely, because one of the ways to soften your heart is to be in the company of the righteous. One of the ways to rise up in the ranks of Allah is to see who you associate with and to attend circles of knowledge. Our Prophet mentioned that attending circles of knowledge brings about the angels' rahmah. Allah, the Prophet said, whoever comes to a gathering where dhikr of Allah is done, Allah's sakina surrounds them. Allah's rahmah comes down upon them. The angels pray for them. So dear Muslim, we are so busy in our 24-7 routine. We're working 70, 80 hours a week. We're spending time at home. Surely we should carve some time out for the masjid. Surely we should make it a routine to come to gatherings of ilm, gatherings of dhikr, attend frequently the masajid. This will soften our heart. Being in the company of the righteous, walking to the masjid, praying jama'ah in these gatherings, it is of the ways to make the heart soft. Of the ways to make the heart soft is dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua to Allah. We literally ask Allah for qalb salim. We ask Allah for qalb that is pure and good. Our Prophet would make dua to Allah. Ya muqallib al qulubi thabbit qalbi ala ta'atik. O you who changes the hearts, make my heart firm in worshipping you. This is our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making this dua. Oh, you who changes hearts, I want my heart to be firm. I want it to be pure. I want it to be coming straight to you. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is praised in the Quran. How? Why? إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Ibrahim came in front of Allah with a pure heart. Notice why Allah praised Ibrahim. His heart was salim. His heart was pure. So we ask Allah for a pure heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that... When our trials came, Why didn't they make dua to us when trials happen? But instead their hearts became hard. Why didn't they turn to us in dua when trials happened to them? But instead of making dua, their hearts became hard. Once again, a linkage between dua and hardening of the heart. So of the ways to achieve a soft heart, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with a pure heart, to bless us with a good heart. Of the ways to soften our qalb, of the ways to have a soft qalb, a good qalb, 
is to immerse ourselves in reciting the Quran and in listening to the Quran. The Quran mentions one of the most effective ways of softening the heart is to listen to the Quran. I repeat, the Quran tells us to soften the qalb, listen to the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, Allah نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها مثاني تقشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين قلوبهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوب إلى ذكر الله. Allah says the believers are those who when they recite the Quran, their hearts tremble, their skin is on an edge, then their hearts soften to the remembrance of Allah. Talinu, their hearts soften. The opposite of qaswatul qalb is leenul qalb. And Allah links the Quran to making the heart soft. So you have a hard heart? Stop listening to the music and the news. Stop listening to the entertainment. Put on some Quran as you go to work. Immerse yourself in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make the Quran what you put on the background of the computer when you're doing something. Put on the Quran. This will help your heart become soft. This is explicitly mentioned in the Quran. Of the ways to soften the qalb as well. Of the ways to soften the qalb is to become involved in noble works that benefit other people. Stop being selfish with your own life, your own bank account, your own car, your own houses, your own family, and get involved with something that is noble. Get involved in a person's life that has no benefit to you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get involved in the life of a yatim, a faqir, a miskin, and help that person out. When you do so, your heart will become soft. How do we know this? Beautiful hadith. I've mentioned this hadith so many times. One of my favorite hadith, Sunan at Tirmidhi. A man comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, Ya Rasulullah, I'm complaining to you. He's coming to complain about himself. Ya Rasulullah, ashku ilayk. I want to complain to you. I want your help, Ya Rasulullah. My heart is hard. What should I do? He's coming literally laying it out. Ya Rasulullah, my heart is hard. What should I do? Do you know the response the Prophet sallallahu gave to him? What an amazing response. He said, go find a miskeen and feed him. And go find a yatim and wipe his hair, meaning hug him. Go find a miskeen and feed the miskeen. And go find an orphan and hug the orphan. Be a part of that orphan's life. Subhanallah, what is the question? My heart is hard. What was the solution? Do something noble. Find a yatim. Find a miskeen. Get involved in their life. Why? What is the relationship between a hard heart and between noble deeds? Dear brothers and sisters, when you get involved in the life of somebody who's deprived, in the life of an orphan, in the life of a poor person, in the life of somebody struggling, when you see the reality of their lives, all of a sudden, your life becomes so privileged and you understand the blessings Allah has given you and you feel a sense of remorse and responsibility. You cannot be the same person if you get out of your bubble of elitism. You get out of your super rich bubble and you walk into somebody who doesn't have a roof over their head. You walk to a refugee camp. You find an orphan that doesn't have parents and you get involved in that child's life. You cannot be the same person. You cannot be the same person. And that's why when the man said, I have a hard heart, the Prophet said, go do something noble. Get involved in feeding hungry people. Get involved in helping orphans. And notice the physical aspect. Go wipe the head of an orphan. Meaning, show some love. So show some love to an orphan. Your heart will become soft. So this is of the ways that our heart becomes soft. We stop being selfish and we get involved in the lives of other people. And one final point again, much can be said. As always, time is limited. One final point for today's khutbah. Of the ways to soften the heart. Of the ways to soften the heart is to frequently remind ourselves of the inevitable ending of life and that is death. You constantly remind yourself this life is but temporary. And all of us have to go. We never gave any human immortality. If you are going to die, Ya Rasulullah, do they think they're going to live forever? If anybody were to be given immortality, it would be our Nabi, our Habib, our Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, Ya Rasulullah, even you are going to pass away. If you're going to pass away, do they think they're going to live forever? Our Prophet said to us, he reminded us, 
أكثروا من ذكر هذه من اللذات. Frequently think of that which will destroy all of your pleasures. Frequently think of death. It will cause you to reorient your life. We are told to think of death, not to become morbid, not to live depressing lives, but so that we can maximize the efficiency of our lives. When we think of death, as a Muslim, we should live more productive lives. We have but one life to live. We want to maximize that benefit. When we remind ourselves that this world is temporary, all the pleasures will go away. That should give us an incentive to maximize the good that we do and live a productive life. Brothers and sisters, our Prophet Sallallahu said, that nobody is further away from Allah than the one whose heart is hard. We don't want to be that person. We don't want to be that person. Monitor your qalb. Monitor the qalb, the symptoms of a hard heart. If you find some of these symptoms, see what is causing them. See the factors that led there and then actively work to make sure our hearts are soft. That is the goal. We want to have qalbin salim. Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On the day of judgment, all your wealth and all your children will be of no benefit to you. The only thing that will be a benefit who comes to Allah with a heart that is pure. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless me and you with and through the Quran and may He make us of those whose verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask Him for His the Ghafoor and the Rahman. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> all praise is due to Allah, the one and the unique. He it is whom we worship, and it is His aid that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed, and He hears the prayer of the weak. As to what follows, dear Muslims, one of the primary causes of the hardening of the heart in our times, and it is unique to our times, is the proliferation of social media and internet and entertainment. I just quoted you a number of a hadith of our Prophet warning us, don't talk too much all the time. Don't get involved in too much laughter. Don't get involved in too much entertainment. And the fact of the matter, we in this generation have perfected the art of entertainment like no other generation. Look at our youth. They can hardly pay attention for a few minutes. They need something in front of them. They need a TikTok video or a Twitter or a Facebook. They need to see some video or something to trigger them. They can't even sit and pay attention. You don't think this is going to cause a hardening of the heart? Before we criticize our youth, how about me and you? What do we do when we're tired? When we have a long day at work, we plop in front of the sofa and start going through the television channels. I'm not saying some entertainment is not halal. Of course, some entertainment, yes, you need that. But if your only goal or your primary function, or the ultimate time that you spend is in front of a TV screen, in front of a telephone screen, in front of a computer screen, then something is wrong. Wallahi, something is wrong. And that's why one of the mechanisms of our scholars, way before there was internet and social media, one of the mechanisms they advise to soften the heart is khalwa. Cut off from everybody else. Sit alone in the masjid or in your room and just do dhikr, read some Quran. Turn your phone off, shut the TV off, turn everything off around you. And just you and Allah, that's it. Just you and Allah, sit there and read some Quran. Sit there after the salah, when everybody's rushing back, and just do your adhkar. These small things go long ways in making the heart soft. Don't trivialize these small deeds, brothers and sisters, because what causes the hardening of the heart is we're always busy in the dunya. As soon as somebody says salam in the salah, we rush back to work. As soon as work finishes, we go home and watch the TV. As soon as TV finishes, we go and sleep. We wake up, work, the cycle begins. And that cycle is a hardening of the heart. We need to break away from that routine. We need to find private time, alone time. By alone time, I mean time between you and Allah and nobody else. And this is why the nafil salah and especially tahajjul salah is one of the most effective ways of softening the heart. Cut off from everything around you, even if it is just for five, ten minutes a day. And sit there, think about yourself, your life, what you've done, what you've accomplished, where you're going. Think about Jannah and Jahannam. Think about Qiyamah and answering Allah on the day of judgment. These small deeds 
is what is called khalwa and muraqabatul qalb. This is what we want to do. And when we do so, brothers and sisters, you will find automatically your heart will become soft because this is the essence of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala bi dhikrillahi tasma'innu al-qulub. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those whose hearts are soft and turn to Him. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma la ta'da'a fi hal yawmi dhamman illa ghafarta. Wala hamman illa farrajta. Wala daynan illa qadayta. Wala maridan illa shafayta. Wala asiran illa yasa. اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بالسوء فاجغله من نفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها مؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك رسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر بر وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله Brothers, please fill in all the gaps. There are people standing outside. So please fill in all the gaps. Make sure there's no gaps in the row. Stow. اعتدلوا. الله أكبر. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم 
الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والتين والزيتون وطور سنين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله
Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, we have a very uh, fortunate and blessed event today. You can stand up, brother. Uh, brother Edward here um, is going to be accepting the shahada, alhamdulillah. Um, brother Edward, bismillah. Uh, so, brother Edward, before I give you the shahada, I always ask questions. You understand what is the message of Islam? There's one God, series of prophets. Jesus is a prophet. Moses is a prophet. Abraham is a prophet. Our prophet Muhammad Sassim is a prophet. You understand these basic points? Yes, sir. And yes. there's and there's going to be judgment and accountability and the the basic pillars of Islam. You studied those? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and you are accepting uh, Islam of your own free will, right? Nobody is putting any pressure on you. We want you to accept Islam from your heart. Right. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So repeat after me. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammad. Muhammad. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. I testify, I testify that there is no God except Allah. That there is no God except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Welcome, Edward. Today you are the holiest amongst us. Do you know why? You are the purest person amongst us. Do you know why? Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that when a person embraces Islam, all of his sins are forgiven at that testimony. All of us are sinful. You have just embraced Islam. You are sinless right now. So right now, you are purer than all of us. You are our brother in Islam. Welcome to our community. Anything we can do for you, you are here. We're here for you, inshallah. Alhamdulillah.